I have a problem. I'm a hoarder. I love collecting things. Even more so if I think I'm getting a good deal, and it may be worth more in the future. I hoard even more. I'm like a dragon sitting on a great pile of gold. Except in my case, it's cloth and ore. I look like some cross between a mining operation and a clothing factory. Why have I been doing this? Well, it's all to do with Relic of the Past. A new system introduced by Blizzard and coming in pre-patch once the level squish hits. I made a video on it recently and talked about the potential for gold making through vendor shuffles. The basic premise is you make relics with old world materials, then use the relics to increase the item level of old world professions when you craft them. The final item is then worth more to a vendor, so you sell it back to the vendor for more than it costs to make. It's simple in theory, but there are loads and loads of different materials that can be used to make relics, and there are loads and loads of old world profession items that can have relics applied as optional reagents. The number of differing options is huge, and it's no wonder there have been loads of bugs in its development on the PTR and beta. Many have been thinking Blizzard may just scrap the whole thing and not bother, but each week sees Blizzard making fixes and not changing the core system. I'm now more and more confident that this is coming, and I want to see if it's worth it and what I should be looking out for. I'm going to take a deeper look into the numbers involved and work out just exactly what I've been hoarding and what it might be worth. And yes, this does mean a spreadsheet. It's the only way to nail down all the figures and try to make some sense out of them. You are more than welcome to take a copy of my spreadsheet. The link to it is in the description. Just make a copy for yourself, don't try and edit this one, you won't have access. The main issue here is lack of knowledge. We need to see the numbers in order to make decisions. Informed decisions rather than rough guesses. Up until this point I've been buying indiscriminately, anything under a gold is fair game to me. I figured if it's that cheap, it must be worth something, right? Well. There's more to it than that. A lot more to it. Let's take a look at the stock first. Here's a list of everything I've been buying based off the paste bin I created to go shopping with. Everything in the yellow boxes needs to be entered manually. These are just the things needed for a Relic 5. I've not included the lesser ones. I'm focusing on the big guns that take you to item level 87. I'm using a new variable of TSM 4.10 and taking the smart average buy price. This takes into account the average price of only what I have in my bags and my banks, rather than the whole historical price. If I were to go and farm this myself, that would be a whole other story as well. We'll talk about farming a bit later. This is purely to track out my out-of-control spending habit. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. 300,000 gold. I've been hovering around the million mark liquid gold for at least a month, so it's about what I've been making steadily through professions anyway. Some of this I've had for ages. It's probably gone all dusty and stale by now. In some cases of the leather, I don't even have some, so I took the market average at the time. I know some of the leather can be made from simpler subparts, but for the sake of simplicity I've not included it here. So that's a good start, at least I can face the true story of how much I've been spending. It doesn't mean a lot because it has no value until we do something with it. My next step is to calculate how much it would cost to make each variety of Relic 5 with the different materials. These things vary wildly as you can see. They all make the same thing, a Relic 5. Once it's made, it doesn't matter what material or profession it came from, and you can freely trade it with other players. Now we are starting to be able to notice patterns. This is a good way to work out what your rough price is for a relic, and how many you can make. This figure is important because you can reverse engineer it to work out your maximum price for future materials. There are some standout ones here. I'm looking at the vanilla cloth and ore, because that only needs five, and I got them really cheap. The wood ones are also interesting, because if you set up your garrisons right, you can have a steady supply of materials in the future. Also, nether weave cloth looks a good one. That's only been introduced recently, and I was able to snap up quite a few at a good price. So what I did next was take the top three out of this, and paste the values down here to get an average price and total quantity. Now you can see how this information helps me digest my spending and make something of it. I also think it's important to look at time, even though most of this can be crafted semi-AFK. Making over 8,000 relics takes 273 minutes to craft. That's a good chunk of time. The relics stack to 20 and can't overflow into the mailbox. Oh yes, that's a pretty important point actually. If you are planning on mass producing these, managing your inventory will be critical. Only BFA crafted items overflow into the mailbox. Everything else stops when you're full in your bags. You can put your relics in your bank or your reagent bank and use them from there. So this is going to have to be done in phases. So that's all very interesting. I can see my Relic 5 price is just under 5 gold, and I can make over 8,000 of them. So that's great. I think that's really cheap for a Relic price. 
My personal feeling is they will go for more like the 7 to 14 gold mark, depending on how people get their base materials. I'm thinking roughly 1 to 2 gold per base material, and usually there's about 7 of them. So this is going to open up so many new opportunities for old farms. Those poor knolls at Sentinel Hill won't know what hit them. Right, brilliant. I feel like I have more of an idea of potential and values here. The next step is to look and see if there are any good combinations that come out of other materials and their vendor value. Here is where I've been trawling through everything I can craft and add an optional reagent to them and then cross-referencing that with what it costs to craft, what materials it requires and what price and stock quantity I have for them. More spending. I know, I know, I did say I had a problem. Here's me taking account of some of my other stock, mainly the other vanilla cloth and tide spray linen. I have a base price for tide spray because I use that for the bracer shuffle to make expulsion. The bottom price is two gold here because of the whole pants thing, and we know how that turned out. I imagine this is what will happen to all these other materials over the next few weeks. There will be a price floor based on all the different shuffles, until they get to a point where it's no longer worth it. Many others have done some great work already on spreadsheets, and mine covers only my own discoveries and from talking with the community. I'm sure some with bigger brains than me will run the numbers on everything. Anyways, another set of yellow boxes to fill here and, and track stock. Using this will feed into the options below and work out potential profit. But yes, that is another 125,000 spent. To be honest, that tie spray linen already has another purpose, so maybe I can discount that. Maybe. I've also focused on tailoring here. There seems to be way more opportunities with cloth than the other two professions. I've looked at a few for blacksmithing and leatherworking. If I find more, I'll add them to the list. This is why the past couple of weeks I've been maxing out these three professions as much as possible. Who knows what other combinations we might find. Okay, looking at this list, we have a few I've picked out. All these numbers feed from the yellow boxes above, so no need to manually put anything in here. Now we get to the exciting bit. Is it worth it? What can we do and where can we make money? Here is the list of potential gold makers. There may be others, so please do more research if you let me know and find any. The first one I notice is the profit on brown linen pants. That's really good. This is mainly down to me getting lots of linen at a really good price. I did say I've been spending. I really hope this works out because that's a good 200,000 gold profit on those alone. That will go some way into covering my costs and making some money back. The pre patch is right around the corner, so we'll find out soon enough. The thing is, as always, look at the time. That's two hours of crafting right there. And that's not taking into account the relics and the making of the bolts and general shifting stock around. The gold per hour on this is not something you can easily pin down until you track the whole process from start to finish. There is more in the other professions, I'm sure. There are some really nice potential options in blacksmithing if you can get your ore cheap. Mainly copper and thorium, it looks like. I've earmarked my thorium for making relics, but maybe it's better used here on the leggings. We have options, certainly. Hopefully this spreadsheet will help you look at your own numbers and choose what to do with your hoard and make your own decisions from there. My potential profit here could be around 400,000 gold based on what I have. I may increase my relic price and use some of the other stuff that I have that doesn't make good end products and use that instead to make the relics. At least I feel way better informed than when I started this process. Knowledge is power. Exciting times are ahead. This is not just about the vendor shuffle alone. That's the most boring part of the process, and I really don't intend on doing this for very long. What truly excites me is finding the prices in the material markets, understanding where all the good farms are going to be, watching what other people are doing, flipping a few items, and most of all, I really want to find items to sell to other players. Twinking is still a thing, items with special effects or really good sockets are going to be very interesting, and the number of combinations has completely exploded. This really has turned the professions on its head, and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out from it all. Moving on beyond this, I will process my current stock once pre-patch hits, and focus my time after that looking into Shadowlands professions and beyond. There is so much to be done. But at least I know now where my money has gone. I'm sure I'm not alone in my spending. Please tell me I'm not the only one, right? It's been great fun looking into all of this, and I hope it comes through pre-patch with as few game-breaking bugs as possible. Please be careful if you find anything clearly broken. Let Blizzard know and carry on playing the game as normal. Until next time, happy gold making, and I'll see you very soon.